hello, welcome back to another episode of OBGYN Reacts to TLC's famously entertaining I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant and Runs It with Educational Commentary. This is in fact everybody on the internet's favorite time of the month, much better than that other time of the month, and I will never stop using that corny joke to intro these videos. If you're new here and you would like to learn more about pregnancy and gynecology, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, we would love to have you. If you don't like learning about pregnancy and gynecology, I don't know why you're here, but don't bother subscribing because that's what we talk about. With two kids from previous marriages, 40-year-old Michelle and her fiancé Cliff believe their baby-rearing years are behind them. Okay, so I'll be back at 11? I didn't think they were going to have any more children. Have fun, guys. I have a thick blood condition. Do me a favor, and let's get ready to make a salad. Michelle has polycythemia vera. Polycythemia vera is pretty rare. It's a red blood cell disorder or a myeloproliferative disorder where the bone marrow makes too much red blood cells. The most common sign that people present with is really bad itching when they get out of especially a hot shower. They also can have hypercoagulability, meaning they have an increased risk of blood clots. It's pretty rare in people who are young enough to be pregnant, which I'm assuming we're going to be pregnant given the name of the show. So that's uh, a little bit unusual. People who have this, they can have an increased risk in pregnancy of things like like hypertension or high blood pressure, preeclampsia, pregnancy loss, abruption, which is where the placenta separates from the side of the uterus, uh, babies that don't grow big enough called IUGR or growth restriction. So that's a, an interesting thing that we don't see very often, but can have complications related to pregnancy. We weren't looking for an addition to the Brady Bunch. <laughs> we were using condoms. My menstrual cycles my entire life have been very strange, very random. We were working out and running, jogging. I made it down from a 12 to a size of eight. Oh my God. So she's exercising a lot, which sometimes weight loss can prompt ovulation in someone who maybe wasn't previously ovulating regularly. She said her periods were not previously regular. So that could be what's about to happen here. And then they also were using condoms as their primary form of birth control. Condoms are about 99% effective when they're used every single time and correctly, but they are more likely to be forgotten, broken, oh, it's just this once, we'll just skip it, things like that. So the effectiveness rate in what's called typical use, which is how most people use condoms when they're utilizing them as their birth control, is a lot lower, a little bit less than 90%. So you're always running a little bit more risk unless you're using them exactly as you're supposed to, which is not the norm. And that's okay. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't use condoms and use them perfectly every time. It just means that a lot of people don't. True or false, breastfeeding while you are pregnant could cause you to have contractions. The answer when we return. It's me! While we wait on them to answer our trivia question, I wanted to tell you that we have new merch shirts out. The vaccinated because science shirt is available at the link below. Also available on a hoodie, a fanny pack because, I don't know, I like to carry snacks around and I thought other people might also like that. And there's also a kid's design which is Vaccines make me grumpy, but not as grumpy as polio, which is available on adorable baby onesies as well as toddler size and kids t-shirts. If you're interested, link will be in the description box below and on the spring shelf below the description box. Let's get back to I didn't know I was pregnant. Breastfeeding while you are pregnant could cause you to have contractions. The answer, true. Breastfeeding triggers the release of the hormone oxytocin, which could cause contractions. actually seen this uh, question before in one of these episodes, but I'm going to go over it again. Breastfeeding while pregnant might cause contractions. However, breastfeeding during pregnancy is not associated with an increased risk of preterm labor or pregnancy complications. So in an otherwise normal pregnancy, there is no reason for someone to have to wean. And this is a really, really common thing that is told to people that is not scientifically based. That summer, Michelle's father is diagnosed with a serious illness. Losing weight went to the wayside. My priorities went into taking care of him. So went back to a size 12. Michelle also has to contend with her own health issues. My legs are very tired and my feet are very heavy due to my blood clotting disorder. Her feet would swell. Our legs would swell. So this is common in pregnancy, but it's also common with people who have polycythemia vera. So, you know, she has irregular periods as it is is using condoms to prevent pregnancy and has swelling, which she has had previously because of the polycythemia vera. So she may not recognize this as a pregnancy symptom if that's what it actually is. November 12th of 2006, 
started to feel intense pain in my lower back, which progressed around to the front. I thought I was having a kidney stone attack. There was blood in my urine. It's exactly what you have when you have a kidney stone. She just keeps getting all the things stacked on top of each other. So she has polycythemia vera, where she's had these symptoms in the past. She's had irregular periods, so it's not unusual for her to miss a period. And now she has symptoms which are likely labor, given the context of this video, but which she says feels just like a kidney stone, which is really common when people have had nephrolithiasis or kidney stones in the past, they will often compare that pain to labor because it can be very similar. So I'm still not shocked at this point that she hasn't realized what's going on. Sometimes these episodes, I'm like, how do they not know yet? But this one, I, I don't know, I I can see it. Michelle goes immediately to the emergency room where she gives the nurse a urine sample. They came back with some pain medication for me and it really alleviated the pain. I was very relaxed lying there waiting for news about my kidney stone. The door opened and five people walked into the room. So I thought, why do all these people need to talk to me about a kidney stone? Okay, but I want to know why do all these people need to talk to her about a pregnancy? <laughs> I mean, all they've done so far is take her urine, right? So they don't even know how far along she is or anything, but I don't understand why it's an emergency all of a sudden. I mean, I guess maybe they could be worried about ectopic pregnancy or rupturing ectopic with how much pain she had coming in or something like that, but it's still jarring to have that many people run in for what you think is a kidney stone. Doctor said, Michelle, we have some news for you and you don't have a kidney stone. So I thought, okay, now there's really something serious wrong with me. I just got an eerie feeling, like, are they gonna tell me I'm dying? And he said, you're pregnant and you're in labor. Wait, wait what? And I'm like, people, I'm 40 years old, I'm not pregnant. I kept saying, I can't be pregnant, I'm not pregnant. So she's in denial, I am in confusion. How did they only take a urine sample and then tell her she's in labor? They haven't even done any imaging or anything yet. A common misconception is that based on a urine sample, you can tell how far along someone is, and that is not at all accurate. There are some very wide ranges of normal for HCG, which is what is measured in the urine, and they tell us almost nothing about how far along someone is. So I'm sure something is just edited out of this story. They had to do more between taking her urine and telling her she's in labor, uh, but that's an interesting thing and something I see clinically a lot. Even sometimes we have physicians who will say, oh, the patient's eight weeks, and we'll say, how do you know? And they'll say, well, the HCG level was XYZ, and that's just not at all accurate. What are you talking about? I came in here for a kidney stone. I didn't come in here for a baby. A little kidney stone, hello. I don't look pregnant. She is about to deliver without even being aware that she'd been pregnant for nine months. You mixed up the urine with somebody else, you're lying to me. I just went hysterical. I started crying. The blood in Michelle's urine was not kidney stones after all, but in fact, her water breaking. So what she thought was blood in her urine was her water breaking and some bloody show or cervical mucus with blood in it. That's something to easily mistake. The vagina and the urethra are very close to each other. But just of note, the way that they phrase that, it wouldn't actually be in the urine if it was your water breaking because your bladder connects to your urethra, which connects to the outside, and the uterus connects to the cervix, connects to the vagina, which connects to the outside. So they're separate places. So the blood in her urine was actually blood that was coming out vaginally from her water breaking. We're sitting in the waiting room and they finally let Cliff go back. So he came back out, told me and Megan that Michelle is pregnant and in labor. There was no prenatal care for either one of us. I am 40 years old. I'm on a large dosage of blood thinners and it does lead to quite a bit of bleeding. The doctors did tell everybody that she might bleed to death. We always worry about people on blood thinners and it kind of depends what when she's on and what her dose is. But it's usually something we can control if someone happens to go into labor when they're on blood thinners. It happens. People are on blood thinners in pregnancy. I wouldn't ever go so far as to sell someone, your mom might bleed to death. That's really poor bedside manner. So the appropriate way to counsel is, you know, being on blood thinners increases your risk of bleeding. And because you're having a baby, we expect some amount of bleeding to begin with. We have ways of stopping the bleeding if it happens, but you should know that there's a risk that you will have more bleeding than is anticipated. Very, very rarely that can be bleeding that threatens your life. And in that case, blah, 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 and go into discussion about blood transfusions, surgeries, things like that. That's informed consent. Informed consent is not, your mom might bleed to death. That is terrifying. Nobody wants to be counseled like that. I could hear her screaming from outside. I had to hold my ears because I couldn't really take it. When I was completely 10 centimeters dilated, they said, okay, we're gonna start pushing. Oh, good, okay, you're almost there. My worst fears was that she might die. I was really scared. I didn't want my mom to see it. 
I would walk outside. This breaks my heart. I, I can kind of imagine being in that position because I had a good friend who had a baby when I was a very early medical student. I had no idea like anything about physiology and birth and all of that. Yeah, it was very early in my medical school career. And so I remember that feeling of just being terrified that something horrible was gonna happen and just not knowing. And I wanna say that I think that the reason people feel like this is one, because of course birth can be scary, but it is also very natural. And we don't get hardly any really good education about anatomy, about physiology, about sex education, and therefore about birth. So anything related to this is just kind of confidentially kept within the community of people who have babies. And that can cause for a lot of panic, both in people who are pregnant and have never delivered a baby before and in their family members and their teenage children in this case. So I think this is a really good cry for we need better sex and physiology and anatomy and reproductive education in general in this country and in the world probably too, but especially here, it's just poorly taught across the board. But I really feel for them. I mean, can you imagine how absolutely terrifying that would be to just not know that your mom was even pregnant and then to just hear her screaming and not know what's going on and be told by the team she could bleed to death and all of these things. I mean, of course that's terrifying. You can tell by the way they're talking about it that they're really traumatized. Didn't take very long. Oh my God, it's my little sister. Oh, Michelle, look excellent. Look here. Michelle gives birth to a baby girl they named Charity. I don't know, is she gonna be okay? I started to think back on all the things that I had done for nine months. Is there anything that I have done that could affect her? This is very common in these episodes and I say it every single time, but we do the best we can with the information that we have. Of course, it would be ideal if you knew you were pregnant and you got prenatal care. And that's why I always say, if something is odd, something is off, take a pregnancy test. But this is not a perfect world and we don't always know. And you have to try to move forward without guilt because you didn't have any idea. I also like how this baby is like two months old and just looking around when it comes out. <laughs> Adorable. Neither Charity nor I had any complications. The doctors were just amazed. The happiest moment is when they laid Charity in my arms and I knew that she was here for a reason. I cried. It was a very, very, very touching moment. I can't imagine going from, I didn't know anything was wrong, to I have a kidney stone, to oh my gosh, I am pregnant, to I'm not only pregnant, I'm in labor and delivering a baby, and then having a new baby in the family. That's a lot to process all at once, and it's okay if you ever find yourself in the position of having a baby expectedly or not expectedly, and you don't immediately feel that, oh my gosh, I'm in love connection. For some people, it takes time. I loved my babies. I would have thrown myself under a bus for them, but I didn't like know them, and I didn't have this starry-eyed moment the minute they came out. I needed to get to know them. Of course, I would protect them with everything I am, and I, I loved them to no end, but it still took time. This is a new person. I wanna get to know them. So it's okay if you don't always have that immediate starry-eyed connection. If you do, wonderful. But if you don't, it doesn't mean you're going to be a bad parent or something is wrong with you. I had no movement. I had no cravings. There was a red flag that would say, Michelle, you're pregnant. There was nothing. Michelle most likely conceived in March of 2006. Apparently we weren't using condom that day. Heat of passion got the best of us. Okay, that's what I was saying. It's not uncommon for people to use them as what is called typical use. That's why it's typical because most people will occasionally not get a condom because they're out or they forgot to buy them or they had a glass of wine and who cares, it's just this once. That is what typical use is quoted as. So don't get mad at me when I say this, every time in the comments someone is like, oh, why are we gauging it by typical use? Because it's typical, because normal people occasionally do this and it's okay and it's normal and you should know that the failure rates increase a lot if this is the case. Though Michelle continues to deal with her blood disorder, two years later, healthy and happy Charity lives up to her name. The birth of Charity was a very big blessing. Everything that happened was my little sister being born. I really think it was a miracle. She was just a blessing that I didn't know that we needed. Adorable little Charity. I'm so glad that everybody made it out perfectly fine and safe. If you like this episode or you learned something, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell to never miss an episode. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me in the comments. Be kind and I will see you next Monday. And if you like the new shirts, they're available at the link in the description below.